Hey guys, welcome back. Now, uh, in our last video, we're dealing with this idea of sovereignty. And you may have remembered this slide. This is the slide where I talked about the various places, and there's so many more we could go to, uh, for God being sovereign. And Isaiah 10 uh, deals with Assyria. Uh, Romans 9 deals with Pharaoh, who's just this wicked man, and God sets him up for the fall. Uh, and then you've, you've got other passages that deal with, with individuals who God either blinds or opens their eyes or withholds them from sinning. Uh, and the Bible is full of these situations of God holding back people or or basically letting them go and, and letting them go full force. And so so let's take a, in this side note, let's take a look at a few of those things. Again, it's a little bit outside the vein of Ecclesiastes, but I want to cover it because it's going to be an important topic that Solomon's going to build on. And I at least want you to be aware of, of what's going on in these passages. Now, the first passage here is the one here in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 5. And uh, obviously, God's people were, were very wicked. They weren't doing the right thing. And God is trying to draw attention to that. And then in process, what he does is he, he disciplines them. Like, like a father disciplining a child, only this is a little more severe. And uh, what he does is he's, he's laying it out for him, And he's saying, listen, you have rejected me. You have chosen not to do what I've asked. Which, again, draws us back to our side note when we talked about dice and, and wisdom. Because God expects a certain level of behavior, he's not going to be bound by us. So it's not like we can come and be like, you will always obey me. He's still sovereign. But again, Solomon is still going to extol the, the virtues of wisdom. But when we reject God, that's where some of this stuff comes into play. So let's just read this section together. So uh, again, if you want to join me, we're in Isaiah chapter 10, uh, and we're going to be here in verse 5. Now, in Isaiah 10 verse 5, it says this, O Assyrian, rod of my anger and the staff in, the staff in their hand is mine indignation. Uh, so again, Assyria is coming into the picture expecting to be in control, expecting that all of this stuff they're about to do is their own decision. But God is reminding them, like, no. You guys are an instrument of my wrath. Just remember that. And in fact, God is going to go so far as to say, uh, Assyria, you thought in your heart to do this. I, I was using you to do this, but then you went too far. And so now I'm going to judge you for that. So, so look at verse 6. I will send him against a hypocritical nation. Against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge. To take the spoil, to take the prey, to tread down like the mire of the streets. Okay, so he's saying all this stuff that you think you're going to do, it is me who is sending you there to do it. And, and so this isn't a shock to God. This isn't like, oh, it's out of my control. Like God is literally saying, I am sending you to do this. Now, let's keep going. Verse 7, how be it, he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off nations not a few. For he says, are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Kalno as Carchemish, and is not Hamath as Arpad, is not Samaria as Damascus. And my hand hath found kingdoms of the idols. And whose graven images did, ex ex did excel them of Jerusalem and Samaria? Shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do unto Jerusalem and her idols? Wherefore it shall come to pass. So, so he's saying, uh, Assyria, you are my tool. I'm using you to do this. However, you got it in your heart to go after it, and you thought that it was you doing all this. So, so God is, is kind of this behind the scenes saying, you don't realize it, Assyria, but you're my, you're my hammer. Is it, 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 in, in God's eyes, he is taking Assyria and he's saying, this is all you are. You are my tool being used to punish my people because they've turned from me. And Assyria is like, yeah, look at how great we are. Look what we did. And, and, and look at how God responds. So just a, just a taste of God's sovereignty on, in all fronts. He says this, shall I not, uh, again, verse uh, 12, wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed, not Assyria performing this work, it's the Lord. When the Lord hath performed all of his work upon Mount Zion and Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, by the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people. I have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people, 
And as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peeped. So, take a look at what God is saying to Assyria. God is saying, Assyria, you're just a tool in my hand. The tool cannot elevate itself against the hand that wields it. It makes no sense at all that a hammer would be proud of the work that the hammer did. It's just a tool. The carpenter's going to be the one who's proud of the work that was done, not the hammer. The hammer's just a tool in the hand. And we need to understand that we are all just tools in the hand of God, and we can be submissive tools or we can be punished tools. And that's what God is saying to Assyria. He's saying, Assyria, I used you as a tool. And, and you'll look at some of the kings in uh, following up after Solomon. Some of the kings who were used as God's judgment did well, and they did it for God's glory. And then other kings were like, ha, look at how elevated I am, and God punished them for it. And so so there's a response. There's a, there's a well, look, again, look at the text. He says this, shall the axe, verse 15, boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod would shake itself against that which lift, against that lifted it, lifted up, or as the staff would lift up itself as if it were no wood. So, again, think of this text. This text is directly saying, again, Isaiah 10, if you elevate yourself against God, if you lift yourself up against God, you are as silly as a saw vibrating itself against the tree. That, that doesn't happen. Someone's got to move the saw. So, so, someone's got to pick that saw up and use it to cut down the tree. Someone's got to hold the staff up. The staff doesn't hold itself up. So God may be using the staff to do a job, but the staff is nothing but a stick if God's not holding it up. And so so that's that's the logic here. That's that's the clear teaching here of Isaiah chapter 10. He says, "Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of fire, and the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and it shall burn and it shall devour his thorns and briars in one day, and shall consume the glory of the forest." and his fruitful field, both soul and body, and they shall be as, a, as when a standard bearer fainteth. Which is a pretty big deal. And the rest of the trees of the forest shall be few that a child may write them. So he's just saying, like, you're proud of your forest. You're proud of all this strength and all this. Yeah, you're going to get to the point where you're, you're going to have so few things to credit for your own that even a little kid could count it. And again, he's, he's rebuking Assyria and saying, Assyria, I'm going to deal with you for your pride, but I'm still going to use you. I'm, I'm still going to use you to get my job done, but I promise to Israel I'm going to protect a remnant. So even though you think that you're going to utterly obliterate them, I'm not going to let you. And I am going to preserve a remnant, and that's where the rest of that passage goes. So it's important to note specifically here in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 5 through 19, God controls the situation. These people are tools in his hand to do with what he wants. And ultimately, his will still going to be done. So that's a reminder of God's sovereignty. It's a reminder of how fully God is in charge of this situation. Uh, if you have no idea what the context of this is, take a look back at the main videos on Ecclesiastes. And we'll dig into some of these other passages in other side notes. But again, hope this is helpful to you guys. And uh, tune in for more.